is uh, one of my closest personal friends uh, in this business. He's a guy I respect, I look up to. Um, he's been, he was a, I was a high school strength coach that just clawed, fought for his kids, and, and, and did everything he possibly could to get better for his athletes. And, and, and found opportunities. Worked for Scott Keller at Houston, uh, goes and becomes the head strength coach at, at Utah. That's when they, uh, the Urban Meyer years, when they went to the BCS and started the whole BCS buster thing and the, and the whole deal goes from there to Florida, wins the national championship. It goes to Virginia where they, they do a phenomenal little year. Uh, you know, uh, Howie Long's kid was a first round draft pick. These guys coach more first round draft picks than I can count. Uh, and then now he's the head strength coach at Mississippi State. But, but like I said in the opening, I know no person, no strength coach out there that cares more about his players than this guy. I mean, I'll, you know, I, I think I work long hours. My staff works long hours. We'll, we'll get here 6 a.m. and we're leaving at about 7 most nights. And, I'll, you know, I'll get a phone call about 8.30 when I get home and I'm just done on eating. He's, he's just now leaving and, uh, and getting home. And uh, we'll sit there and talk shop for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, um, as we got the kids playing and whatnot. I mean, he just cares that much about his guys. But, um, but one of the best, and uh, we're real excited here. So Matt Bayless. Great to be here. Appreciate uh, everybody coming in. Um, as Coach said, it's, uh, it's an honor to be speaking in front of you. Uh, he called me up. and, and uh, you know, asked if I come speak uh, at his clinic, and I was completely honored by that. To, first off, he's a great friend. I respect him a ton, but also a chance to speak uh, to fellow colleagues, to, to high school strength coaches and collegiate strength coaches. is uh, There's no bigger honor. So uh, I appreciate you guys here. I hope you take something from the presentation. Um, In-season training's tough, uh, and that, you know, that's what I'm going to speak on today is, is our in-season program. Uh, it's evolved over the years. It's always changing. And um, so the, the first quote I put on here, how we won't accept anything but their best. Uh, the big part of what we do is, is we demand a lot. We demand a lot from our players, a, a, as we all do. The, the demand uh, of our players is extremely high. That being said, the demand of our strength coaches uh, and myself is extremely high. Uh, every single day, that we're at work training our, our team, uh, it's like the last day to be alive, basically. And that's no exaggeration. But when we walk in the weight room, when it's time to go to work, when I go to bed at night, I get myself up and, and excited and motivated to make sure that that day is going to be the best day that those kids have ever had. That's very uh, important to me, uh, and I make that very clear to our strength staff. That's what we're about. And so the players understand when they come in, they better be ready to give everything they have. Uh, because they're going to get it from us. They're going to get a lot of energy. They're going to get a lot of intensity. They're going to get a lot of enthusiasm. They're going to be coached very hard, uh, but they're going to be coached in a positive way, meaning the way I teach it and the way I, I try to present it is we're trying to get our team to feel like and, be, and believe that they can beat anyone's ass, basically, that they can get in, they can, it's a one-on-one -on -one situation, and they're going to find a way somehow at the end to win. They will find a way to win. So our job as a strength staff is to create that belief in their mind in everything we do, in everything we do while they're with us for that hour to two hours. So it's never a, you know, I'm going to fight you, I want to beat your ass. It's not about that. Sometimes, you know, it, it escalates to that. But really the, the, the actual, the goal is we want those players to feel like there's nothing they can't handle. There is nothing that they won't be able to accomplish. And, uh, you know, we, we had a team meeting yesterday and our head football coach, and by the way, the, 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 the biggest key to success, you know, that I've found in, in doing this is to have a great head football coach. Uh, I've been blessed to be around unbelievable head football coaches. I mean blessed. And our head football coach now is Coach Mullen, who we got, uh, we, we worked together at University of Florida, University of Utah. I knew him when he was at uh, University of Bowling Green. And the support that he gives me when he's speaking to the team is huge. You know, when you have a head coach saying, okay, here's the deal. This is, the, we have something called a commitment board. And our commitment board, we have six levels. We have compelled, we have committed, we have compliant, we have existent, resistant, reluctant. And that, that was his big push. And not, not football, it was about that board because that's, that's how we grade 
during the offseason. That's what we did it this year. We changed it up a lot, but that's how we grade at the end of the week. We'll grade our, our, our athletes on where they fall on that commitment board. And he's pushing that, and he's plugging that, and we bring up a big sled, a prowler sled, right up in front like here. And we load it up with weight, and here's him, and here's me, and we're, we're about to push the sled, all right? And then we, get, we bring up one of our top defensive linemen. He comes up, and he says, all right, Purnell, stand on top of the sled. So we're both trying to push the sled, and we can barely move it. You know, and the whole team stand there. He goes, all right, Purnell's on top of the sled. He's reluctant. He's resistant. He's not, he's not letting us push him. He's, not, he's on there, and we're having to really fight to get this guy going. He said, all right, Purnell, step off. Purnell gets off. There's still a lot of weight on the sled. Coach and I are pushing it. We're pushing it a little bit easier, all right? But it's still hard. It's still hard. Purnell's letting us. He's letting us do it. He's compliant. He's existent. He's letting us push the sled. All right, and then he said, all right, now, Purnell, put the strap on. Okay, put it on your shoulders. Purnell starts moving. We're pushing it. That sled moves very easy and freely. And for a head coach to show that, okay, here it is. This is compelled. This is committed. This is where we need to go. Because we've been there a year and a half now. We just got there. And let me say this. Uh, Mississippi State's an unbelievable place. It's an unbelievable place, and it's, it's, it's the ultimate challenge to come somewhere and, and try to do something that hasn't been done before. And that's where we are right now in that program, is we're trying to do something that, you know, we had great success uh, in, the, in the 90s, unbelievable success. And that was kind of up and down in, in, the, in the 2000s. We went to a bowl game a couple years ago, and last year we had an exciting year. Got a lot of work to do. Got a lot of work to do. But we got a, a, a great, great group of kids that want to work hard and, and are really starting to buy in. You know, we, get, we need more leadership development. You know, our guys, they got to be leaders. We need, we need guys to step up. So we're kind of in that, in that infancy stage right now of our program where we're teaching how to do all these, how to be a champion. You know, how, how to how, how, not just work because we're saying, like Coach Kai said, but now the athletes take it upon themselves to bust their ass and push each other. So that's where we're at right now. Uh, our strength staff, you know, to, to, you cannot have success if you don't have a great strength staff. When I, we have clinics and we talk to our kids, the, the, the recruits coming in, I'll say, look, here's the deal. It ain't about me standing up here and telling you to go do something. We have six strength coaches on the floor at all times with a group of 20 to 30. Four to six players per strength coach, okay, at least. You know, hopefully you have seven or eight. And what that does is every single guy is coached. It's completely hands-on. It has to be that way. I could not do the job if I just had to stay there and coach by myself. I couldn't do it. I, it would go, I would go nuts with that kind of stress. And I've done it. I was a high school strength coach uh, for five years, so I, and I did it myself. And, okay, I'd be watching one lift, and everything else would be going on. And in my, I'm dying inside because I want to go coach the lat pull down, and I want to go coach the narrow grip, and I want to get it. So I said, all right, whenever I have my own program, i got to have people. i got to have bulldogs, warriors. They're gonna, I, I can trust to make sure that they're pushing the guys as hard, uh, as hard or harder than I am, because that's really the key to the deal. Uh, I'm the director of the whole athletic department, so we have, you know, Coach Aikens. He does men's and women's basketball and does soccer and volleyball. Coach Desell does baseball. Baseball's a big deal there. Uh, we have five GAs there. We've turned our GAs uh, into assistants. So if you want to be a GA with us, you better be ready to jump in the fire because you're going to be dependent on to be a guy quick. Or a gal, quick. Um, so that's kind of our setup there. In, in fact, Chad Smith and Lewis Carella both worked co with, uh, under Coach McKeefrey. Coach McKeefrey's kind of, uh, he's the guy I call when we need great strength coaches. He's the ultimate. Now, I got to thank everybody. I will never, ever do a presentation without thanking, first off, my wife and son, um, who I, you know, you don't spend enough time with. And I've, I've learned now that, you know, I call during the day and I make sure she's doing okay. When I see my son, I learned this from Tony Dungy. When I walk in, I park my car, I push a button on the door, I walk into my house, and now the day's over. It's finished. Now it's about my son and my wife. Because it, it, this job, is, it, it consumes you. And if you don't have that, you're going to be in trouble. Assistant coaches, um, without your staff, I talked about football coaches as well. If you don't have the support of your football coaches, I've learned now that you've got to be on the same page with all your football coaches. I have our strength uh, staff go visit with each position coach, and they talk about their players and they talk about position drills because they want that. They want all that stuff, so I want that relationship built. I can't do it all. I can't visit with every position coach and the head coach and the trainers and the academic people. You can't do it all, so you delegate it out. Players, 
It's about the players. All right? It's about the players. A lot of times we forget that, but it's a player's game. It's about the players, and we, that's, that's our whole mindset. Coach McKeefrey, uh, the ultimate mentor, guy that I depend on for a lot. I'll pick up the phone probably 10 times a year to, to pick his brain. Uh, we've known each other a long time. Uh, he whipped our ass when I was at the University of Houston. That's when I knew I had to get in the, inside his head and figure out what he was doing. Coach Keller, uh, one of my all-time mentors, my first boss at the University of Houston. Coach Matt Foster, who's my best man at my wedding, taught me more about just kids, coaching kids and, and motivating kids and the differences between uh, kids and, and caring about kids as people and, and character development. And of course, uh, Mickey Murati, University of Florida, who's uh, the best in the business. If you've ever had a chance uh, to, to, to visit him or go visit him, you need to do that. Uh, he is the best. Lifelong learners, they said I'm honored to be here. If you get one thing from me, uh, that's great. Take one thing. I'll tell you real quick a story. My first clinic back in 1998 was at Notre Dame. Coach Mickey Murati was speaking just like this. He's up here and I'm, I'm sitting right there taking notes and trying to learn from him. And I was a high school strength coach. Just how, God, how, how do you do that? How do they do that? Wow, this is incredible. And I just watched him speak. And uh, I was in awe. I had goosebumps. And I'm just saying, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. So that's why I, I, I look at these strength clinics as, as it's, a, it's the best feeling to be able to be here. Visits, going to visit people. We do that once a year. I just sent out our staff to go on visits. One guy's going, uh, you know, Georgia Tech and Clemson and the Falcons. Another one of my guys going to Miami. Um, phone calls call me. We do that all the time because we want to learn. We want to be great. You never have all the answers. The more, the more you're in this business, the more you find out how much you don't know. And so you just want to keep learning and keep learning and keep learning. DVDs, books, all that stuff. My purpose, the reason I put this up, okay? If you get up every day, all right, and all you're thinking about is, okay, we've got to get them stronger. We've got to get them faster. We've got to find a way to win. Okay, that's going to get old real quick. Okay, that's going to get old for you, in my opinion. It's going to get old for players. So to me, you're trying to make a difference in their lives. That's how we approach it. That's how we approach it. All right, we're character developers. I call it man training. When my guy screws up and they'll screw up, I'm going to take him and talk to him like he's my son. What are you thinking? What are you thinking about? You want to throw it all away? You want to ruin it all? Why would you do that? Because that's going to happen. And so, you know, and there's some guys, as Coach Kyle said, they're, they're motivated by playing ball at the next level. How could you do that? You're going to ruin everything. You don't think the scouts are going to come talk to me and say, How's he, how is he? How, what's his, what are their habits like? What kind of guy is he? What kind of guy is he? Is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? So those kinds of things. they got to know you care. Character development, leadership development, a mentor. As intense as we get, as much as we push them, what I want to have also is where they come in and talk to me. Half our team have, have children. I have, I have a son. I want to sit down with our kid, with our kids and say, how's your son? How's your daughter? What are you doing as a dad right now? How are you taking care of them? That's very important to me. That's very important to me, and they need to know that because my son is important to me. Number one thing in my life. So we share that, and they need to know that. As hard as we go now, they need to know that there's that side as well. Attitude shaper, leader. Uh, as a strength and conditioning coach, you got to be a leader. You know, you can't just say, here it is, go do it. I have found that they've got to be told, led, pushed, uh, almost on a daily basis. Now, again, we're still in that infancy stage of our program, and I'm wanting it to turn around to where the leaders start to step up and start to push our, uh, each other more. And we got to do a better job of that. Attitude shaper, and then, of course, the strength and conditioning part of it. I got this uh, quote from Coach Dick Hartzell. Have any of you seen Coach Dick Hartzell speak before? He spoke at our clinic, and we were talking about in-season training. You know, what's the biggest thing with in-season training? Well, and, and we, you don't want to kill them in the weight room during the week of a game. As hard as we go. You're going to be like, we well, just said you, you, you train the hell out of them. Well, we do. But there's a fine line. There's a balance of pushing hard, but then also making sure they're fresh and ready for the game. You can see I put a picture of Anthony Dixon. He better have gotten drafted here in the fourth round. We were hoping he was going to get third round. But you can see the power that he has. That dude's got to be fresh for the game. He's a fast twitch guy. If I blow his legs out during the week of a game, we're in trouble. That's the leading rusher of the SEC, so i got to make sure – uh, he's ready to go. That's Leon Barry. That's a wide out. He's coming back. That's a fast person right there. He's going to run away from some people. Got to make sure he's fresh. 
And that's Pernell McPhee, a defensive lineman for us. Got to make sure he's got juice, that he's fresh. So in season training, first thought came to my mind is, don't blow him out. Don't blow him out. Keep him strong, but don't blow him out. And we're going to go through this presentation, and hopefully you'll kind of understand how we do that, how we attempt to do that. It's not what you do, but how you do it. Uh, Mickey Barati, famous uh, quote right there. If you notice here, uh, how we do a hand clean, how we do a pull up, uh, we're very strict on technique. You know, we're looking for triple extension, the hand clean, uh, the pull ups, we want full range of motion. We want to control on the way down. You know, we want a guy right with him. We're always two guys to a platform. Um, we're, we're, we're very concerned with safety and doing shit the right way. Uh, God help us if we ever get anybody hurt in a weight room. I can't have that. Um, I, I don't know how to look at a kid in the eye if that would happen. So we're real concerned with how they do the lifts. Um, you know, the rest period is probably shorter than most people would do because it's two guys. As we get heavier in the weight, we give them a little bit more. We superset a lot of things. Um, and this is an in-season phase. This is during spring ball. So you can see we're getting after it pretty good there. But it's not what you do. I can give you a, a workout and say, here it is. You might do it and be like, well, what the hell? That, that, you know, that's it. But it's how you do it with anything. With any program that you get, it's how it's coached. It's how it's taught. You know, you could look at a simple pull-up there. He does his pull-up. And, you, you know, you might do 10 reps as fast as humanly possible. Well, it's a lot harder to pull it up, pause it, and control it on the way down. Now, sometimes we don't do it that way. But especially in season when joints are sore, their bodies are sore, I can't push them as hard in other ways. The technique has got to be extremely, extremely focused. Uh, the eccentric part of the lift has got to be unbelievable. The hand cleans you've got to be very careful with because one wrong move and a guy can get hurt. In fact, this guy right here, Salisbury, has a back issue. He has a back issue. He's had that. That's something that he had. Now, we're still cleaning, but you can see we're very, very careful on what he's doing, how he's doing. That's a starting guard for us. We can't get him hurt. Uh, our overall philosophy, attitude and effort are everything. When they walk through the doors of our weight room, it's on. No matter what's been going on in their life, it's time to go to work. It's time to go to work. We don't let them in the weight room. We weigh them outside every single day. They get weighed in. We come in. Time to go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It's time to get it going. We'll bring them up. We'll talk to them. All the strength coaches are on the same page. And they know they've got to give the most effort they've ever given that day. What have they given that day? Mental toughness leads to physical toughness. We believe the harder we make things mentally, the more physically tough they will become. I uh, heard Dr. Kent speak. He said, strength coaches make other people do what they don't want to do. We make players do what they really don't want to do. Mentally tough. We want to make our team as mentally tough as possible. Educate, motivate, cultivate every day. Um, that entails, you know, the hows and whys of what we're doing. Also, the motivational aspect of training. Every single player is different. Um, some guys want it right you. They want you right in their face. Let's go. I mean, get after their ass. Some guys, it ain't like that. Some guys could care less about weights. As coach said, it was unbelievable that how you were saying that, coach. I wrote all that down. That was awesome. Because I mean, we got guys, speed guys, that could care less about how much they're going to live. I mean, he could care less. All he wants to know is, hey, coach, I returned six. I had six interceptions. I'm all SEC freshman. Oh, really? But you know what? It's going to make you better if you're a little bit stronger. It ain't going to hurt you. It'll make you a little better now, Corey. I work with me here now. Put the 10 pounds on. It ain't going to hurt you to be a little stronger. I know you returned uh, six picks back, and I know, you know you're all SEC and everything, but listen to what I'm telling you. Player accountability. Uh, it's huge in our program, and again, that stems from the head football coach. If he's not on the same page with you, you have no chance. You could be the biggest hard ass. I mean, you got all these, you know, things that you want. If the head coach is not like, yep, whatever, you know, that's that's the deal. It's a hard fight. It's a hard battle. So our accountability. Uh, guys don't miss workouts. Guys don't come late. If they do, it's it's not. A, it's very bad. Um, you know, if if there's disrespect in any way, it's it's horrendous. I mean, it's just. We got a good situation. Now it happens, and when it happens, there's accountability to it. But we, from the get-go, we try to set a message from the head coach down, this is how it is. In-season training program philosophy, uh, progressive with periodization. Uh, I put a neck, the uh, manual neck on there. We train the neck 
uh, twice a week, year-round, sometimes three times a week. Um, but we're going to stay progressive and we're going to paradise. We're not going to change that. We're going to get strong uh, throughout the end season as strong as we can, uh, depending on what, you know, what injuries or what kind of soreness guys have. We're going to stay multi-joint as much as possible. We're still coaching effort as hard as possible. We're still doing explosive things. Uh, injury prevention, we have something called a weak link card, um, which, which we do a corrective exercise testing, which looks at hamstring tightness, hip, flexibil- uh, hip tightness, ankle tightness, core strength. Our athletic trainers and our physical therapists help us out with that. We spend a lot of time, like a workout gets done, we'll say, all right, guys, go get your weak link card. And the tight hip guys have a, a hip circuit they do. The tight hamstring guys have a certain hamstring. And that's on top of what we're already doing for hip mobility and, and our hamstring flexibility program. Uh, off-season lifts, if possible. Hey, if the lifts are good in the off-season, they're going to be just as good in the in-season. It's our belief. You know, and of course, sometimes a guy might have a wrist or a shoulder. He might not be able to catch a clean mail. Or we'll high pull. Or we'll do a dumbbell clean. But we're going to stick to a lot of the same things we did in the off-season and the in-season, just not as, uh, with, with as much volume. The percentage, 6 to 85% is kind of where we hover around. We don't go much heavier than that. Lower body is lower, which we'll see later. Um, and then her injury hurt sensitive. We always will train. We're always going to train no matter what. I mean, you you got a, a banged up shoulder. We're going to go single arm and we're going to train your legs. You got some kind of issue with, with your knee. We're going single leg. We're going upper body. We will always train around an injury. There is no hiding. You get hurt in a game. Let's say we play Saturday and we're back in the weight room on Sunday uh, and you can't go Sunday, then you'll come one on one with me on Monday. We'll find a way. We will find a way to train you. 72 hours it takes to detrain a muscle, 72 hours. So you have a guy, what, and this drives me nuts. You know, you're going in the in season and a guy wants to lift one day a week. You look at him, you go, are you out of your mind? It's the in season. It's the most important time to be training. This is the most important time to be training. One day a week. You can't miss a day. You got to go two days. You're, you're going to lose everything. So in-season training is the most important time to train. And the thing is, with the in-season, it's 12 to 14 weeks. I mean, it's, it's, it's a real deal. It's, it's, it's like almost like the NFL. I mean, I have no idea, Coach Asano, that you, I mean, you're the expert there, but 12 to 14 weeks to be able to train uh, a, a team, that's an awesome challenge. I didn't like the off season, you know, off season, you know, eight weeks. That's kind of easy. In season, that's the challenge now. Keep them strong. Keep them, you know, don't let them get hurt. Make sure they're excited to lift weights. All right. But don't t- keep them too long because they got a million things going on. You know, they got class. They got to study film. Coach needs them to go watch more film. Uh, they got meetings. Rush, hurry, 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 hurry. There's tons of hurrying and rushing going on. The in season is the most important time. We want to limit injuries. All right, limit. Are you ever going to prevent them? I don't think so. We just got done with spring ball. We had one ACL. Uh, we had, let's see, what else did we have here? That was our worst one. Um, had a couple of banged up shoulders, nothing. Besides that, we were okay. Maybe a little, an ankle here or there. Knock on wood, uh, we were okay. You know, no, no muscle pulls now, you know, but you might have one or two. Hopefully you won't have any, but you, you know, you're always trying not to have them. You know, coaches are always saying, why does he have a pull? Wait, what, muscle pull. Why? Why? What's the deal? Why, why does he have a muscle pull? Well, maybe it's because you guys did special teams, ice cold after we warmed them up ready, and then you had them sprint down the field as fast as humanly possible during the special teams period. That might have something to do with why they pulled the hamstring. I don't know. I'm just taking a guess. But that's, that's what you have to deal with. So in our field, in-season training is, is, is the ultimate challenge here. Keep players fresh for practice. You know, you don't want them to get outside and, and, and say, well, coach, I can't go. I got, you blew me out in the weight room. I got nothing left. Keep players uh, on the field at maximum playing level for each game. Uh, they have to have that. Maintain strength and conditioning levels. Maintain muscle mass. You'll see we talk about reps and sets. Uh, we're going we're gonna to keep our reps high in certain exercises. We, we want to keep the lean body mass up as high as we can. We'll check body fat uh, in the beginning of the season, the middle towards the end and you know typically in the middle you'll start to see it start to climb up a little bit if that happens we'll take our guys we'll give them a little bit extra cardio nothing to kill them um, or or up their reps on certain things but we believe the more lean body mass you have the more effective the more successful you'll be on the field 
Keep players strong physically and mentally. Don't burn them out. That's where it's hard. If, if you're someone that goes very hard, if you train your players hard, two days a week's probably enough. Two days a week's probably enough. We go for an hour to an hour and 15 minutes of training session in the end season. Some people go 40, 45 minutes, some less. They go three days. Now, these are with your, your players, guys that take all the reps. I will right, we'll talk more in the nuts and bolts of it, but just to give you an idea. Improve the strength of the players who don't play. You always got the guys who travel, but don't play one snap. You know those guys. They, they go, they do everything. They're not red shirts. They're not, they're not not travel, but they don't do anything. You can train them harder. You keep getting them strong. They're on a three-day program, okay? So you keep training them pretty hard, but then you still got to be careful because they might have to play. So you can't go too nuts on them. And then your red shirts and your developmental program, um, that's just like an off-season program. We, do, we use a three-day with them. We used to do a four-day. We found that was just a bit much for everything else they got going on. They're already depressed. They're already sad because they were big stars in high school. And now they've come to college and they're nothing and the coaches don't pay attention to them. So, and we're trying to kill them in the weight room. So we figure three days is probably enough. And obviously the number one goal is to win. We have to win or in our business, you're out. Workout breakdown. This is how we do it here now. High rep travel. The guys take a lot of reps that travel. Last year, our day one was Sunday. We liked training the day after, uh, the day after a game. We, we, that's, our head coach liked that. We like that. Um, it gets all the soreness out. Um, it just, we, we get them quick. We don't have to worry about too much craziness going on on Saturday night. Uh, we get to see you know, the, the injuries, get with the trainer. We know right away where we're at. Um, it's, 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 it's a heck of a way. I mean, you're working seven days a week, and, and so that'll tear you up, but it's probably the best way to do it as far as, as the health of your players is concerned. So Sunday's our, our big day. We squat that day, we clean. If they can't squat or clean, we'll leg press, we'll do something, total body. Um, you know, two push-pull circuits, uh, you know, a bench and a, a row or a lat pull down, a dumbbell movement and a, and a, and a pull, you know, a shrug, a, a shoulder exercise, weak link hard, good warm-up, good footwork. We hit them hard pretty good there. Our minimum rep guys, the travel, they're a three days, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday. They're going to get that blast on Sunday with a little bit more volume. They're going to come on Tuesday, get a little bit more legs. Thursday will be similar to their, their uh, Sunday work. The not travel and the red shirts, those guys, like I said, is like a, an off-season deal. Conditioning, what we do, uh, first off, our practice is very up-tempo. If you watch us practice, uh, it's all out. I mean, it's, it's, it's very intense. When, when it's supposed to be intense, coach kind of goes, he has teaching periods, then high intensity. Teaching, high intensity. Those high intensity periods are all out. I watch the guys, they're gassed. They're going pretty good. So our conditioning occurs in the beginning of practice. We do a very extensive dynamic warm-up. You know, if coach gives me the time, we'll spend 10, 15 minutes uh, on a dynamic warm-up. We'll do the dynamic drill for 10 yards, and then we'll sprint 10 yards. And then we'll do our percentage sprints. We'll do 90% sprints. On Sundays, after they've worked out their day back, we might do 20 sprints to 15, 10, whatever it might be as the season goes on. Monday, they're off. Tuesday, we come back. Dynamic warm-up. Tuesday's our hardest day of practice. The sprints start to shrink down until we get to uh, Wednesday. Four to six sprints with that dynamic. Thursday, you do your dynamic at a 10-yard interval, you know, just a couple 10-yard sprints, and then we're going at it. So we kind of decrease how much we're doing. We don't do a ton. Of, of running uh, in the end season because of all of how hard we go uh, during practice. The variety of your workouts, you know, you want to make sure that you provide variety during the end season. Uh, I'll talk to you about that, but we change up the setup, the warm up. Rather, you know, in our off season, we have traditional stations a lot of times, and the end season, we'll kind of rolling start them in, or we'll, we'll do something different where we'll have everybody to platform and stuff, just changing it up giving them variety. That in season, like I said, is long. It's 12 to 14 weeks. And so we want to give them a little bit of variety uh, so they don't get bored. So it's not the same mundane thing. The exercises we do are slightly different, um, so on and so forth. Planning. When you're planning, you're in season now. Everything we do as the, the kids are scheduled in predetermined groups. Now here's the thing. It all depends on what the class schedule is. In a perfect world, You'd like to, you, to have all your training done in the early morning and be finished. doesn't work that way. In, in the collegiate setting, they're never going to go to school and get a degree. So you have to work around that. 
So we'll have maybe a 6 a.m. group. Last year we had 6 a.m. We had a, uh, an 8 a.m. Then we had a 1 o'clock. We had a 1 o'clock. Okay, that was uh, on, uh, on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Wednesdays were those two-day guys, those high rep guys. Thursdays, that was day three of those minimum rep guys. On Tuesdays, we put all those minimum rep guys in one group at six. We got knocked all them up uh, right away. So it's all based on class schedule. We, we start planning that during two days. You got to know the practice schedule. Some coaches, their hardest day is, is Wednesday. Some it's Tuesday. For us, it's Tuesday. So the, the, the high rep guys, we give them off on Tuesdays. Minimum rep guys, they come in. They're not going to go as hard during practice. But the high rep guys, we want to give them off on Tuesday, uh, make sure their legs are, are fresh. That's why I love going on Sunday. By Tuesday, the soreness is out of their legs. They're ready to go. Wednesday, still a tough practice. Thursday now, you know, we're, it's, they're all locked in, and it's much more mental than it is physical. The, uh, the depth chart, again, you have to know the depth chart. Who's the first teamers, the second teamers, third teamers? You know, sometimes we don't get that information until game week. So you're like, okay, what, what, you know, where do I put this guy? Where does this guy go? What group should he go in? And so there's a lot of changing. There's a lot of adaptation, as Coach said. A lot of, you have to be able to adapt on the fly um, with in-season training. Some guys might be on uh, the two deep, but now they're not. Or some, this guy was, he was, you know, he was a guy that was not playing at all, but now he is. You know, so you got to be careful. That's why you can't, you know, blow their legs out if they're a guy that doesn't play as much. But he might play. If, if the starter goes down, he's got to play. Don't blow his legs out because he won't be able to practice. Same thing with kickers. I made that mistake at Utah. I said kickers and, and you know, try to torture the kickers. But then they got to kick. And you know, a guy misses uh, an extra point or a field goal. Why? Well, the straight coach blew me out. Guess what? Fired. You're out. So you got to be careful with your kickers as well. Now, we make them come at 6 a.m. But you know, I'm real, I, I treat them like pitchers. You know, how's, how's your hip today? How's it feel? Uh, all right, you know, okay, well, you know, so they're a, they're a different deal. They just got to kick, and we just let them kick. <laughs> and then uh, we work around that. You got to know your bye week, all right? You got to know your bye week. In the olden days, uh, I would say, oh, the bye week's here. Yes, we can go to a four-day. Let's try and kill them. Let's have, like, an old-school day. No, no, that's not what we do now. After doing this a while, that's a recovery week. That's a chance to let them you know, get their feet under them. Uh, let, you know, let everybody catch their breath. It's more of, uh, you know, we're going to continue to train, but let's back off. Let's let them get healed up a little bit, especially in our conference. The healing is good. Training camp to in-season transition, okay? Last year, uh, we had five weeks before we, we played our first game. So we get done with the summer. You ended on a high note. We had our midnight lift. It's unbelievable. Yes, it's done. All right, everything's great. Now it's five weeks of training, five weeks. Two days, you know, school, they're still in school. That's a long time. So you have to have a plan of, okay, what are you going to do in those five weeks before the games even start? How, what are you going to do with their legs? What are you going to do with their shoulders? How are you going to make sure that they're able to practice? You know, Coach, it's going to be a physical one today, Coach Bayless. It's going to be physical. All right, I better make sure that uh, they're ready to go in the weight room as far as I'm not going to blow them out too bad. I mean, it's, there's a lot to think about. Head coach says, all right, you're going to have three groups during camp, are you going to have three lifts during the week during camp? You know, or are you going to have four lifts? Well, shoot, I, I don't really need four, so maybe on that third and fourth, I'm going to turn those into weekly corrective exercise days, where I just spend, they just come in during that time and stretch and roll, foam roll and stretch and bend and go through the hurdles and rack squat progression, uh, just hip mobility stuff. So it just depends on what the schedule is that the coach gives you. And like I said, I'm blessed to have a great head coach. So he's given me the opportunity to do it all the right way. Incorporate the hip mobility, incorporate ankle mobility, incorporate the flexibility needs that we have all within the, you know, the uh, program. Communication, all right? If you're someone that doesn't like to talk or doesn't like confrontation, you cannot do this business. You have to be able to go in as head coach and say, coach, what do we got? You know, what's the situation here? What's practice? Well, how do you want to condition them? Um, you know, what, what, what's the plan? What, what are we doing? Because if you just wait and you set up your, you, know, you spend hours and hours, Coach Mack and I were talking about this, you'll spend four or five hours, okay, do I want to tweak this? Do I want to change that? want to make sure you're planned, all this stuff. Then the head coach will say, we're going to do it this way. Great. You take that and just throw that in the garbage. So what do you have to do? Make sure you get on the same page with the head coach right away 
So you know, okay, I, I got it all planned, Coach, because I, you know, I'm here 14 hours a day, Coach. Make, please, this is how I do it, and uh, or this, you know, what do you want me to do? This is what we have. Help me out here, assistant coach, uh, player production. Go talk to your, your assistant coaches. You know how's you know the tight end coach? Well, this tight end takes all the reps. He's blown out. You know he, he he's got nothing less. He's losing weight. He's dehydrated. I need to know that. You know, and, and we. You know, he'll tell me what's going on in practice. This one here, he ain't taking as many reps. You know, he's okay. Don't worry about him. So guess what? We'll train him a little bit differently in the end season. That one guy, now, you know, they don't know that. The kids don't. I'm not going to tell the kid I'm going to take it easy on you today. But, you know, they don't know anything like that. But I know he'll be, he might do a little bit less volume. You know, he might not do both of his sets till failure. This guy that ain't doing much in practice, we'll blow him out. He ain't really doing much. But this guy... You know what I mean? And that, it's really individualized in the end season. It really is. Athletic trainers, the health of your players, uh, you have to have constant communication with your athletic trainers uh, daily, two, three times a day. Um, you know, you don't want to ever let a player tell you one thing, and then you go to the trainer like, what? what what's he talking about? So we're always on the same page um, with any issues. Assistant strength coaches always getting their input on, on our players, how they're doing for them. What's their mindset? Because they'll tell them things they don't tell me. You know, like the other day we, were, we were, uh, had a staff meeting, and our assistants, uh, one of our assistants, Chad, said, you know, they were, Nico was telling me he didn't want to clean today because his wrist hurt. I'm like, it was? You know, he, he, uh, he didn't tell me. You know, and we're still getting to that. We're, de we're developing that relationship. But I want them to be able to tell, especially in season, I have to know. And so if they're afraid to tell me, they'll tell the assistants, and we'll work around those injuries because, again, it isn't going to help anybody if they can't go out and practice, they can't play. So you got to work around those injuries in the end season. Players, I talk to our top guys. I talk to the, the captains of our team, the leaders of our team. I'll say, how are your legs? Where are your legs at? I said, and I'll tell them. The reason I ask you is because I know what kind of work you are. I know that you're a war daddy in a weight room. I know what you're about. I trust you. Where are we at? You know, where's our team at? When I was at the University of Virginia, Chris Long was the guy. You know, in Florida, we would go to Tim Tebow. You'd go to the top guys, you know, the workers. You know, our play last year was Jamar Chaney uh, and Anthony Dixon. This year, it's going to be K.J. Wright, Chris White, Derek Sherrod. You go to your top guys, you know, and, and, and you find out, okay, yeah, coach, they're, they're, we're, we're dying right now. All right, we'll back it off. Or everything's good. I feel great. Practice is great. Got my legs. Feel good. That's a real good way of doing it. Watching and evaluating practice constantly, um, taking notes, tracking yardage. We'll track yardage sometimes with our wideouts, uh, our DBs, uh, and our linebackers, and just in our tight ends, you know, and our running backs, and kind of see what kind of yards they're putting in. You know, we'll do the the 75 percent, we'll do the 90 percent, uh, just to see where they're at. You know, motivation. We're a big program that believes in motivation. And now the end season, it's it's much easier um, to motivate them because they're getting ready to play games. They're getting ready to do what they love to do. However, there are still, uh, you know, depending on your schedule, depending on the type of team you have, there's, they still, there's still 18 to 22 year old kids. They still need to be excited to work out. They still need to be, what, I mean, what, are we, what do we got to come in and lift for? I mean, we're getting ready to play Alabama this week. I mean, do we really? Yes, we really do. And, and more important than ever, we really have to, we, all the stuff we did in that off season, all the shit we went through, all the, all the, 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 the stuff we talked about, this is what it's about now. This is it. You know, the off-season stuff that you talked about, bring it back in the in-season. Don't just leave it. You know, we, we, had a, uh, we brought out a board for one of our games where we had this one-on-one -on -one rope deal, you know, and it was fight for every inch. One of our off-season lifts was about fighting for every inch. We brought that board out, and we had it up during the week of the game. And then during, during the game, we had that board up in the locker room. You know, the head coaches, I mean, this is him. He wants all this stuff. He loves it. Again, you've got to have your head coach on this now or it ain't going to work. So the whole week, I mean, it was about what we talked about in the offseason. It was about that fight for every inch. And you can imagine what that weight room was like. The music was loud. The guys were focused. We were getting to go play a big-time ball game. That's some fun training now. When you're getting ready to play and your team's walking in like this, let's go. And you got, I mean, there's signs up and there's music playing and everyone's jacked. I mean, it's awesome. You know, now, it's not always that way. You know, it depends on the opponent, and that's where, now let's say you're playing a lesser opponent, and the kids think, oh, you know, we should be able to handle them pretty well. That's when you really earn it. 
That's when you really earn your stripes. That's when you got to get in their mind and say, we don't take anybody lightly. There is nobody we take lightly. This week is so important. This week of training is unbelievable for our program. What's about to happen is that there's nothing like it. And, and that's where, you know, you, you, it becomes really an art. You know, it's easy to motivate. It's easy when the opponents are incredible. But when it's, the opponent isn't so good and you know you need those games for victories, um, that, that's where the art of it comes in. Uh, the pulse of the team, uh, extremely important. You've got to know the pulse of your team. That's where you go to your leaders and, and talk to them. Recovery and regeneration here. Put a, a few things on that we did during spring ball here. You see the, uh, the band hamstring program, the hip program. We have the foam rollers. That's our ankle program. That's a few ways um, that what we do to take care of our body. We try to do these things year round. You know, we really, we really spend a lot of time with the end season and during spring ball. Nutrition and supplementation, we take a lot of pride in that. We have something we call a breakfast club, and we have training table. And so everybody that's on campus on our football team must eat breakfast. They have to eat breakfast. They are monitored. They're coached by strength coaches. I have one strength coach go from 7 to 8. Another one goes from 8 to 9. Okay, so 7 to 9, you have to eat breakfast. If you don't, there's that player accountability. they got to see us, and there's an issue there. Training table, that's the entire team. Training table Monday through Thursday, entire team. I believe the number one factor in controlling injuries and injury prevention, in my opinion, is nutrition. In my opinion, it's nutrition and hydration. That is where the most injuries occur. That is the deal because what you're saying is if you don't make sure your guys eat breakfast and let's say they eat some shit bag dinner uh, at 6 o'clock at night or 7 o'clock at night and they don't eat till noon the next day, you're going 18 straight hours. And let's say they had some type of alcohol the night before. 18 hours, no food, dehydration. And then you come in and you say, okay, we got to get after it today. We got to get ready for the University of Florida. You know, so we just eliminate all that. It's out, gone. Breakfast club, you're on it. You're there. We make sure you're coached. Don't eat that, but eat this. Don't drink that, drink this. Sometimes they don't want to hear it, but you know what? Too bad. It's our job. Make the players do what they normally wouldn't do. One of our players said to me yesterday, we just got done with the team meeting. Our co head coach got everybody fired up. Everyone's excited. Kid says to me, coach, do we have to go to breakfast club today? At the time, I said, what? Did you just hear what the head coach just said? Go eat breakfast every day. Every day you can, you, you can preach and talk about nutrition to these guys. I went to go visit with Detroit Lions last year with Coach McKeefrey, and he said it point blank. Every single day you can tell your guys about eating. They, 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 it goes in one ear and out the other. You have to talk to them every day about it. Nutrition and supplementation. We have bagels in our back room. We have peanuts uh, in our back room. We have shakes. We have anything that puts weight on. We have high needs guys, guys that need to put weight on. We have guys that don't need to put weight on. Guys that don't need to put, add much weight, we give them muscle milk, a little less calorie. The guys that, that have to put weight on, we'll give them Gatorade shakes. Have two, have three, have four, have a bagel. You know, put peanut, peanut butter on. Eat, 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 eat. We made sure he had breakfast. We made sure they had dinner. Then you're saying, what about lunch? Well, they, they, you know, hopefully one meal a day they're going to do, but believe it or not, they won't. So that's what we have to teach them and talk to them about. Buy a loaf of bread, put it in your dorm room, get a bottle of peanut butter and jelly, and keep it in there and take it with you to class. That, I mean, that's constant. That, that message is given to them constantly. Um, the cold tanks. Massage and cold tank. I'm a big fan of cold tanks. What we've done, as soon as our players come off the field, okay, as soon as they're off the field now, they're, I mean, they're getting off. Straight coach is standing right there. Wide out, DBs, you're in this tank. Running backs, linebackers, you're in this tank. And they'll just take their shoes off, go right with their pants. Boom, 10 minutes, they're in there. We don't miss them because, you know, we've done it where, all right, well, okay, coach, I'll see you. I'm going to go in the training room and do it that way. I'm going to be taking a shower and all that stuff. Nah, just come in, get right in there. Well, make sure you get in there, 10 minutes, constrict the blood flow on your legs, get your legs back, and every one of them, to a man, will say, my legs feel better when I come out. Now, they, a lot of them, it's the worst thing you've ever made them do in your life. I mean, you think you're, you're, you're asking them to, to saw their head off, like to get in a cold tank. I'm not, I, I mean, it's unbelievable. We do some of the hardest things on earth, physically, and then you ask a guy to go in a cold tank. I mean, I, my toughest, the toughest guy on the team is the biggest soft softy when it, when it comes to going in a cold tank. It's unbelievable. But you got to make them do it. you got to make them do it if you want to do everything you can to help them get their legs back. So we do that. 
Um, and then the massage. I, I love the foam rollers. I'm a big believer in them. We started using them at Utah with a guy named Jason Bell, one of the best corrective exercise guys I've ever been around, ever. He's still in Utah if you ever want to talk to him. Um, but we've done, we do a, a variety of foam roller work, post-workout, pre-workout. Uh, we bring those uh, to the games. We bring bands and the foam rollers to the games. The massage, we have a massage therapist who works with our team uh, Friday nights before the game. And we'll make a list of guys. And of course, all the linemen want to get in there and get massaged. They're like, nah, you're all right. Let's bring in the wideouts and the DBs. And they get on the list. And those are the guys that we're really concerned about getting massages. But, so, and then also, we'll bring them back on Sundays after the game and to, to, to work all the soreness out after the game as well. So, and of course, athletic trainer treatments take precedence. So if a guy says, uh, you know, coach, the only time I can lift is 6 a.m. I got class all day. Okay, it's my job to say, all right, the only time and he's got a bad ankle, I got to make sure he gets treatment on that ankle. All right, then here's what we'll do. You're going to lift at 530. We're going to lift from 530 to 630. Then you're going to go get treatment on your ankle. Then you're going to eat and then you're going to go to class. So that kind of mentality of treatments are more important than anything else. Make sure you get them in in season critical, critical so they can practice. A little bit about our rep, a little bit about our rep here. Um, you know, three parts to the rep, the concentric, the eccentric, the isometric hold. Uh, you can see we, we practice what we preach. Uh, the kids are going to train this way. Um, that's a, a big defensive lineman for us. There's another young defensive lineman for us. We're going to make sure they're doing it right. Uh, we, we love push-pull. We, we love to move the weight fast on the concentric, control it on the way down. Um, big believer in, in doing things, especially on the pull till fatigue or till failure, um, year-round. Uh, we're just a believer in doing it year-round with our players. If they're a one-arm person, you know, they can easily do this unilaterally. They can easily just go one-arm. Uh, you know, big thing, obviously, you can always control more weight than you can on the way up, 40% more. So that's, you know, kind of the, one of the reasons why we believe in training that eccentric part of the, of the movement. Plus, it's harder. Plus, it's harder. And there's nothing easy about football. And so anytime we can make it a little bit harder, uh, we like to do that. So that's our rep. Position specific. You know, how, how, how do we get specific um, with our positions, what we like to do? First off, offensive linemen, as you know, the shoulders are the first thing to go with an old lineman. Bad technician of offensive linemen, their hands are out here. You can't really control that. They're a great technician, uh, and they're good, at, they're, they're good at their job. Okay, now you can work with that. We're going to do a lot of scapular work. We're going to do a, a black burns, um, our, our pizza pies. We're going to do a lot of rotator cuff work, uh, internal, external. We're going to do a push-up plus. Uh, uh, pro tra um, we're going to do, uh, what else do we do? We do a variety of things to protect those shoulders for our offensive linemen. Quarterbacks will always end with a rotator cuff for them, band, med ball work. Um, we'll do some, some blade work with them as well. Wideouts and DBs in the end season, lower body consideration. You know, I'm going to make sure that, you know, Chad Bumpus and Leon Berry, two wideouts for us, you know, they're not going to probably squat what the offensive linemen are going to do in the end season. I'm just, I got to be smarter with them. Now, if they can handle it, then we will. But I know certain, there's certain wideouts that can, your fast twitch type guys that can't. They just, they, they, their legs get blown out easy. So those positions we're a little bit more careful with. Uh, everybody, like I said, will spend time training their neck twice a week. We have to do that. We have to protect the neck. And we have to uh, do shoulder stabilizers really for the entire team and, and some part of their core twice a week. Sit-ups, a variety of sit-ups with body weight, with plates, bridging, planks, med ball work uh, within the workout. In-season training, okay? Everyone's situation is different, like I said. Goes off your head coach's philosophy. What you've learned from mentors, player individualization, you know, how are your legs? These are things as you're planning your in-season to think about. The player communication, player observation, game observation. Are they fresh and prepared for games? Always keeping in mind how violent football is. Just think about when they come in to lift, what they're going to go through on Saturday, what they just went through. All right? They're never 100%, as Coach Sky said, it's over after day one and it's finished. And especially in the end season, um, they just get, it's probably worse and worse. So you're, you're dealing with guys that don't really feel well. 
based on scientific principles, but it's also an art. It's also an art. You know, I remember talking with Coach Gittleson. And he said, Coach Gittleson, what do you do? What do you do? You, you never have any pulls. How do you do that? What's your secret? He goes, Bayless, he goes, it's an art, man. You guys, you got, you got to do what you do. Do what you do. It's an art. So, you know, after doing this a while, you find what, you're, what you like in your program, and then you figure out, okay, if we do it with, you know, with, with our guys, they can handle this. They can handle this amount of stuff, okay, so they don't pull anything. You know, I, it's, it's different for everybody. You know, I can't give you the, the cookie-cutter answer on how, how to make sure guys don't pull hamstrings. I don't, I don't have that answer. I wish I did. I mean, you'd, I'd probably be a millionaire. But there's things that, 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 that help. Sometimes we have them. Sometimes we don't. Off-season versus the in-season. I wish this came out better for you, but... You know, obviously, you're dealing with no football practice in the offseason. You don't have to worry about coaches. You know, you're just, you, you're just basically worried about what you're doing. In season, you're taking on a whole other animal, a whole other level of demands. Uh, you go from eight week training cycles to 12 to 14 week cycles. You go from four days to two to three days. Um, you know, we're going to do more max reps, I mean, uh, sets till failure in the offseason, less of those in the in season. Um, on our platform movements, off-season, we like to do four sets. You know, I'm talking hand clean, bench press, squat, incline, narrow grip. We'll go four sets. In the in-season, we like to stay to uh, two or three sets there. On our assistant lifts, two to three uh, sets, you know, the eight to 12s, the 10 to 15s, the six to nines, the five to eights, things till failure are really hard sets. And the in-season, we'll do one or two sets of those. We'll lower the volume there. They don't need as much. 20 to 30 total sets per workout. Uh, in the offseason, 18 to 24, lower end as the season goes on. I mean, we lower the volume in an in-season program as the season goes on. When we first start training, we might clean one day and shrug pull the other day. As that season wears down, now, after halfway through, we'll take the shrug pull out. That low back's starting to really get tired now after eight weeks. We've got to be smart with the low back. Um, 60 to 90%, we usually don't go higher than 90% in the offseason. In the, uh, in the end season, we won't go higher than 85. On the upper body, the lower body, we rarely go higher than 75 to 79%. <laughs> Running, you know, three to four days a week in your off season, in season, like I explained earlier, it's all done at the front end of practice. Um, very extremely difficult, uh, hard upper and lower body training in the off season. Hard upper body in the in season, you can get after their upper body is pretty good. Um, uh, making sure everything's joint friendly and not hurting uh, areas that are already injured, lower body being more careful. Uh, cold tank, we're going to continue to do uh, all year long, probably not as much in the off season, but in the in season, we're very diligent about it. How we warm our guys up, want to give you a little, little example, a little taste of what we do. Um, this is just one, you know, some different stations that we might have. This was spring ball. So station-based, in-season, they would roll, and they kind of roll in and do this stuff. But you have your hip mobility, you have some core, you have some ankle and knee stabilization, got some upper body uh, uh, dynamic mobility, you have some med ball work against the wall. We call it Benedict Sten there, med ball quicks. So just some different ways to get them ready uh, before they lift. Coach Kaz was talking about how he, he spends a lot of time in the warm-up. I'm also a big believer uh, in getting a lot done during your warm-up. Um, I just wish we had more time. I'll get out there and I'll say to our assistants sometimes, God, they just, you know, football coaches have three hours. You do all this stuff, they meet for two hours. Strength guy, you got to get it all done an hour and 15 minutes. And then you're like rushed at it. You know, you wish you really had more time. I mean, you, there's so many great things you can do. But this is kind of how we warm them up in season uh, and even really our off season. Here's an in season plan starters and the minimum rep guys, what you see here. Day one, you have the game reps, the guys that take a lot of reps, and then the minimum reps. You can see we'll increase some volume on a bench press or rows, shoulder press, side raise. We might give them a little bit more volume. On day two, there's more volume. See that, see that day three there? Those are the minimum rep guys on day three. We'll bring them in for another day of lifting. We'll bring them in. Again, they're not playing. They're not taking very many reps during, during the game. They're not going as hard during practice. We'll give them a third day of lifting. Okay, but you can see it's not much legs. There's not much legs on that third day. Because again, if they do have to play, um, you know, you don't want to blow their legs out. And you can see the warm up uh, situation on top as well. Bands, roller sticks, the weak links in there. 
You have the hand clean, you have the squatting on day one, the step ups, the RDLs, one set of each, bench press and rows, shoulder press, side raises, wrist curls, buys and tries. Um, again, it, it's, it's a total body deal. I'm, I'm a firm believer that you must continue to train them in the end season. That's why with the guys that play a lot, we only go two days a week. It's, you can see it's more than enough twice a week. Developmental red shirt, very similar to what you just saw. But on that day three, you can see we're going to deadlift. We're going to leg press them. I mean, we're going to, we call it freshman Friday. You know, that's, we, 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 we did that at the University of Virginia. That was a big deal. <laughs> Try to make it fun, but also make it very hard. Probably not fun for them, fun for us. But it's one of those, you know, okay, you know, are you with us or not days? Uh, are you going to give in or not days? So that's, we use that for Friday. We don't do that every day in the end season. Again, those freshmen, there, there's so many things coming at them. I don't think they can handle all that. Uh, your injured players, we never stop training. Single limb training. Um, you say, why do you do single limb? You know, kill, high school kids don't do single leg training. Now, you, you, I don't mean that as, as against you guys. I'm just saying, like, our guys will come in. Recruits will be like, they come in on crutches. And I'll say, have you been training? No. Coach told me just to sit there and do nothing. I'm like, what? That's not really how it works. You've got to train. You've got to train single leg. You've got to train the single arm. There's still things going on in your body when you train. There's still hormone, growth hormone being released. There's still things happening. Just because you're not seeing any hypertrophy in the muscle doesn't mean you're not getting the effects of training. So if a guy's got some, an issue with one arm, he'll train the other arm and both legs, vice versa with the lower body. Conditioning. If they're injured, they'll condition in some way. Upper body using the UBE. Uh, if they have no, you know, they can't do it with their legs, they'll go one leg on a bike. They'll be in the pool. Some form or fashion, they will be conditioning so and what we say is when you guys come back, you want to be ready to go. You don't want to come back and not be ready. You know, you, the worst thing you can do when you get hurt, go through a rehab process, is not be in shape, not be in condition to get ready to play. Now, that's our big selling point. And then we have something called the pit, and that really helps us out. Coach Meyer, first we started doing that with him back at Utah. I know he was doing that at Bowling Green. That is the ultimate way to find out if you guys are hurt or not. There is no better way on earth to find out if you've got a, a guy that's, that's injured or a guy that's you know doesn't feel like going one day, and things we do in the pit probably might not be legal in some places, but we do it. <laughs> we do it to find out what we have. Uh, you know, it's it's usually young guys. It's usually young guys who think they got something. They've never been hurt before. They've never had you know a boo boo. They've never had a practice through it, and so the the pit provides that for us. Um, a guy that's really, you know legitimately like the ACL guy. Obviously, he's not a pit guy. He's a rehab guy. We're going to get him better. You know, you know, strengthen them in that pit area, but it's a little bit different. Again, it's individualized. Some in-season uh, exercises. I love the floor uh, dumbbell bench in the in-season. Takes a lot of pressure off the shoulders. I love the manual outer thigh work for, for the hips, the glute meat in the in-season. I love the jammer. Uh, great triple extension movement in the in-season. Not a lot of weight, but still getting the, the effect uh, of power and force through the ground. Um, I just put some in-season exercises in your packet. See, just some ideas. You know, we do a lot of things with the bands in the in-season, some manual resistance things, some towel work. Um, you know, and, and again, to us, the band hip flexor exercise is coached just as hard as the hand clean. That's our belief. The hip flexor, I'm going to tell you right now, we got an offensive lineman for the past two years has, has hurt his ankle, and then in our spring game, he just got a knee bruise. He just hurt. Uh, as LCL, okay? So everyone's like, he could, he's an NFL lineman, all right? If you guys got any ideas, please let me know. But our thing is, he doesn't pick his knees up. Now, the kid can squat 700 pounds. The kid can clean, I mean, he's the strongest human being on earth. Bench is 430, 225 for 30. I mean, he's a machine, but guess what? His hip flexors are weak. So you don't think that hip flexor is important? You're damn right it is. And we spent a lot of time, and he's going to get even more hip flexor work. I'm going to pull back on his squats and his other exercises because we're going to do everything we can to make sure this kid can play for us because he's an incredible player and he's an even better kid. Game day responsibilities. I know that's a lot of questions a lot of people have. What do you do for game day? We're very involved. Coach Mullen uh, wants us involved extensively. The night before the game, we're, we're, we're hydration maniacs. I call us hydration maniacs. And really, during two days, we're, hydra we are, we're, we're hydration coaches. 
If you came to one of our practices or the night before a game, you'd hear us, drink, drink, drink. We'll time you how fast you drink a Gatorade. We're all over it. We're on top of their hydration, making sure they're, they're, they're taking care of their bodies before the game, uh, during, during the meetings. You know, we have a player movie beforehand. We have a team dinner. That team dinner the night before um, is going to have, you know, the protein, carbs, vegetables. It might have some other things they like. We might have a little bit of half fried, half baked chicken, a little bit of ice cream the night before. All right, but the day of the game, the day of the game, it's healthy. The meal, the pregame meal is all lean, boneless, skinless, chicken breast, lean beef, lean uh, carbohydrates, um, you know, lean vegetables. It's going to be uh, a dialed in meal for them, uh, pregame meal. We're going to stretch. We'll have the bands. We'll do partner PNF stretching uh, the night before. Guys that want to be stretched will be doing that. Uh, massage therapist is there. The rollers. We have the T-zone vibration machine. Some of you guys seen the power plate. We bring that uh, on the roll with us as well. Uh, we do bed checks, you know, and, and we just we spend a lot of time with them. We spend a lot of time with them, uh, and that's a time, quite honestly, where you get to know your, your guys. You know, it's not that night is about getting them ready to play. So that's a really good time to where you can sit down with them as a mentor, as a coach, and say, you know, you ready to go? You excited? I mean, that kind of deal. So that's fun for us also. Game day, the pregame meal. Again, more hydration, stretching. Um, what we do when we get to the stadium, if they want to, they can come out and do a dynamic warm-up. Typically, our skill and big skill players do that. Then we'll go stretch by position in the locker room at five to ten minute intervals. So we'll say, okay, um, you know, all the specialists, specialists, you're out, special, or specialist stretch. So we'll stretch them in there, and we'll say, then they're out in five minutes. They go out. Then we'll do the centers. Then we'll do uh, big skill in the linemen. All right? High intense atmosphere, uh, music, signs like we talked about. Coach wants it going in there. I mean, it's, it's not a quiet deal. I mean, it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty loud, pretty exciting when you walk into our locker room before a game. During the game, obviously, we're the get back coach, uh, but we also uh, I have to report injuries to the head coach. Um, you know, if something happens, I got to go to him and let him know. Uh, organize the special teams. Those two jobs are the worst jobs in the world, by the way. Try going to the head coach when uh, he's not real happy and tell him about an injury that, that, that the top player has. That's not real fun. And then also calling the special teams um, when no one can hear you and there's 90,000 people screaming at you. You're yelling, punt team, punt team. You know, so that's probably not one of my favorite jobs, but at least you're part of the deal. And then halftime, we spent a lot of time on hydration again. Um, the snacks, you know, believe it or not, when I was at Utah, we had a guy that loved the Snickers bar during halftime. We've cut that out completely. We bring in, um, the, uh, you know, different bars. We bring fruit for them, uh, Gatorade shakes, Gatorade bars, a variety of, of muscle milk bars. Um, so they're eating something healthy so it doesn't get in their blood and they, and they use it right away like a, a candy bar where there's probably no worse thing you could possibly eat at halftime than that. So we're, we, we, you know, we've cleaned that up, obviously. Um, stretch uh, and then motivate again. We, when we come back out for the second half, we do not take them through a dynamic again. We'll stretch them on the sidelines. Uh, and do it that way. And finally, uh, this is one of the things Mississippi State we brought back. It's called the uh, Dog Pound Rock. And our thing is if you train hard and ought to be hard, you'll be hard to beat. And uh, we take that very seriously. We don't just, we tell our guys, look, you got to earn that. You got to earn that. You got to earn that through training, through blood, sweat, and tears. That doesn't just happen. That comes through an unbelievable offseason, an unbelievable summer, unbelievable two days, an unbelievable week of practice. Then you've earned the right to do that, Dog Pond Rock. Only then have you earned that right. So that's kind of our deal when it's all said and done before we take the field uh, and play. I want to thank everybody for listening to me uh, ramble on. Again, it was my uh, honor and privilege to be able to speak here today. If you guys ever need anything, please uh, email me, give me a call. Uh, I'll always get back to you. Maybe not right away, but we'll all, there will always be someone to get back to you. Uh, with whatever you need, because again, I was there and I'm still there uh, trying to get in touch with coaches and learn. So thank you very much.